What's going on everybody? So today I want to talk about a topic that's pretty relevant to my life right now. So uh, fun fact about me, I have this nifty little disorder called Seasonal Affective Disorder. But Peter, what is that? Well, according to the Mayo Clinic, Seasonal Affective Disorder, or SAD for short, is a type of depression that occurs annually during a certain season, amongst other things. I've had this since maybe I want to say middle school, high school, but it only gradually got worse since then. I've actually been feeling the effects of this probably since daylight savings time happened when everyone was very happy to be get that one hour of extra sleep in there. Oh, it's daylight savings time. But I can sleep some more. Then there's people like me who were not quite happy about that at all. Oh, daylight savings time ended. Well, f when my SAD shows up back into my life, I all of a sudden feel very tired, I feel lonely, I isolate myself from people sometimes, I'm just overall, you know, sad, and on top of that, I'm very irritable. Hey Peter, quick question, okay. However, that doesn't mean it's gonna stop me from living my life. These usually last from about November to about March or so, and I wanna be able to share my tips on how I get through my daily life with my SAD acting up, and I think this will benefit anybody who also has SAD, or maybe just depression in general, or if you have a case of like a small winter blues going on. So, let's get to it. Number one, one. Light. Studies have shown that while there isn't really any direct cause of seasonal affective disorder, light happens to be the common denominator. Now I live up north in New Jersey where, you know, we're a little bit closer to like the tippy top of the world, therefore the sun sets a lot quicker during the day during the winter season. I'm literally filming right now at like 6.30 and it's already pitch black out. So what I like to do is that I like to wake up early during these times just to absorb as much light as I can because I work a 9 to 5 Monday through Friday job and I'm always stuck in an office with not much of a window near me so I really don't get much that much sun in my life and it's not really cute. So I try to wake up as early as possible as I can, I throw open the windows, let all the light shine through, and I just bask. When that doesn't happen though, I like to supplement another thing for this, and I like to use light therapy as my go-to for feeling better. You can get one of these light therapy boxes off of Amazon, and you just like buy that, get it to your house, set it up over you, and you just like bask in it for up to 30 minutes, usually in the morning or so, just to get your life, you know, up and going and stuff. And you have to stand like directly in front of it. You can like have it like shining on you as you're reading or texting or making a video. I like to use my ring light as my sun lamp because while it's not technically a sun lamp, it, you know, it shines a good amount. It's the white light that I need and also it, it works well for filming. So, it works. Number two, which I kind of said before, Waking up early is a nice thing to do. Kind of gonna carry a lot of stuff I said for number one in this, but when you wake up early, you will one, the sun's there. Sun's good. You need that in your life. And also you have plenty more time to do activities and get your life together before you go off to go to school or work or whatever. I try to wake up at like 6, 6.30 or so, give or take. Try to, you know, look cute, which I think I did a good job today. I try to fit in maybe some yoga, some breakfast, maybe a health, like a healthy breakfast ideally sometimes, a cup of coffee, just, you know, treat myself a little bit and then head off to work. And just by doing that, it improves my mood tremendously. So, wake up early. Speaking of yoga though, exercise is key when you're having a moment like this. Exercise has been proved for years to do wonders for your body and your mental state and your emotional state on top of that. Just your state, so try to fit that into your schedule if you can. Now I'm not talking about doing anything high intense, you don't have to like join like a team or anything like that, you're more than welcome to, it'll probably help you out, but even just by doing like maybe a 15 minute yoga thing in the morning, I like to do that, and I like to do kickboxing on top of that just to keep my little, you know, frame in shape, and it makes me feel good about myself too, which, ironically enough, I'm not going to my class because I'm making this video, so how that worked out. Exercise equals endorphins equals happiness. It's like what Elle Wood said in Legally Blonde. Exercise gives you endorphins. Endorphins make you happy. Happy people just don't shoot their husbands. They just don't. Except that last part. That's not relevant. Speaking of healthy living, eating. I know that when I'm depressed, I either A, 
don't eat at all, or B, I overeat. Especially with the holiday season right around the corner too, it's not gonna help my situation either with overeating because there's a lot of carbs and sweets that PETA likes, and that's gonna be hard for me to control sometimes. So if you see a little bit of a change in your eating habits, whether you're not eating at all, or you're eating a little bit too much, not eating too well on top of that, take a step back, look what's going on, and make the adjustments. Oh, you got out of bed and you didn't have breakfast? Mmm, you might want to change that around. Get a yogurt. Oh, that's your fifth muffin today? Chad, maybe you should take that down, maybe have a salad. I don't know if there's a science behind it, but I know that when I eat good, I feel good. So, it could work for you too. Another thing on top of that, getting out. I'm actually talking about getting outside and not being all cooped up in your room in your house all day. Now listen, I'm there with you. It is cold. I hate the cold. I don't like the winter in general. I'm not a big fan of snow either. But no matter what the excuse is, you need to go outside and get some fresh air. Fresh air helps your brain work and function a lot quicker, smoother, and your emotions will alleviate. And you don't want to be breathing recycled air all day. That just sounds gross. Am I right? It could be something small for me, like a five minute walk down the road, or even maybe just going into your car to go get some Starbucks. That's what I do, and it makes me feel good about myself. Not just because it's caffeine and, you know, Starbucks, but I just need to just be away from everything that I'm in right now because if I don't get myself out of the house, I feel kind of like a cabin fever kind of moment and it's just not good for my mental state. It's like what Liza Minnelli said in Cabaret. What good is sitting alone in your room? Speaking of doing things, be productive. Be productive. Be be productive. Eh, I can never be a cheerleader. When my SAD hits me hard, I don't want to do anything. Even making this video was a lot for me. I know that for a lot of people out there who do have depression, they start to lose interest in the things that they enjoy. About a year ago, I think, I took a little month-long hiatus from making my YouTube videos because I was just not in a right place of mind and I just couldn't bring myself to it. But once you make the effort and you force yourself to get up from your bed, get up from your little cocoon, and you go ahead and you read that book, you write that letter, you make this YouTube video, you play that sport, whatever. As soon as you do that, you're gonna find yourself immersed in the thing that you love, and it's gonna work out for you tremendously. If one of your hobbies is traveling though, then this tip is for you. Now I know that this is not accessible to everybody out there because of either time or money or another situation in your life that I'm not fully aware of. Trust me, I'm there with you. <laughs> However, if you have the opportunity to go on vacation and travel during your time of this, do it. Specifically, maybe go somewhere with a lot of light. It'll get your mind off of it and it might re-energize you and charge your batteries a bit. I actually took a vacation to Disney a couple weeks ago when I felt my SD starting to, you know, act up a little bit. Went to Florida, soaked in all the sun over there, and I felt great afterwards. I actually still have a video to make from that, which should be airing next week or the week after that, but who knows? I have a hectic schedule. Find a way to treat yourself. Treat yourself. I am a full-on believer on the school of thought of retail therapy, and sometimes buying things actually makes you feel good. I know that's for me, not saying it's for you, but if you like buying things and you want to treat yourself, go for it. Go buy that little bath bomb from Lush. You deserve a little bath time. Do you want that cupcake? Go get that cupcake. Don't get a lot of cupcakes, but get that cupcake. Is that a cute shirt? Yes, it is a cute shirt. Get it. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. Now the last thing which I believe is the most important tip of all this, talk to someone. I'm gonna be very honest when I say this, I know for a damn fact that there's still a stigma out there against people with mental illnesses, disorder, depression, you name it. I also know on top of that, people are not always comfortable with talking about their mental state either. And I respect that and I totally get that. And if you don't want to tell everybody about this, that's fine, that's your privacy, that's your life. I only started feeling comfortable about this maybe two years ago or so, and I've had this for a lot longer than that. Back when I was a senior in college, I was living on campus in an apartment uh, with my roommates, and you know, it was winter uh, semester, just started coming along, and my roommates all, you know, moved back home. I chose to stay in my apartment because I kind of liked the whole independence thing I had going on, I liked the freedom that I had, and you know, it was just a life I kind of wanted to live. I wanted to like learn how it was to like live by myself for a bit. Like not like with roommates, but like, you know, solo self. While it was nice for parts of it, and when it came to my mental health, 
Not so much. I was straight up alone and I was on the brink numerous times and it was a very dark time in my life and I came home one day and my parents knew I was just, I wasn't acting myself and it was to the point where I, actually, I literally just broke down and I told them like what was going on, what was going on with like all of there and like they understood and they comforted me and they assured me that it was okay to feel the way I felt and that, you know, it's okay to reach out for help. From then on, I felt a lot more comfortable telling people what was going on with me that, you know, I'm sorry if I'm not talking a lot. I'm not, I'm sorry if I'm not being so social. I'm not, I'm sorry if I'm not acting as jovial as I usually am, like during like, the spring and summer seasons, but I have this going on. And to those of you who didn't know I had that, you're watching this, so here you go. The more you know, I guess. I know the people with SAD and depression, how we have a tendency to isolate ourselves, and I get that. I do that sometimes in the winter, and I have to catch myself doing that so I can call myself out and be like, Peter, talk to your friends, talk to your boyfriend, talk to your family. They care, they're there for you. It may not feel like it always, but you are loved, you are appreciated, you are valid, you are a wonderful human being, and you are important. Remember that. I hope that sounded deep. But bonus tip on top of that, and this is for any cases that are a little more severe, if you are feeling as if these tips may not work for you, or if you know it's, you feel as if it's getting worse, and like your thoughts are becoming a lot darker, and you may attempt, please reach out to a professional. I have some hotlines and some resources in my description box below. Please check those out. Keep them in your little book or repertoire or whatever it is you keep that has a whole bunch of helpful links in there. Please look those up and check it out. I really hope these tips and tricks work out for you. Please leave a comment below if you have any tips that you use yourself. I would love to learn some more because hey, there's not, there's never a wrong thing with having enough in your back pocket to go off of. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe as well. I make new videos every week, so please stay tuned for those. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that little notification bell. As always, make good choices, make interesting choices, live adventurously, take care of yourself because it's your life and not mine. And I'll see you next time. Wink.